Mark in Stockholm, Sweden writes to me and says, Hey Paul, why are horn loudspeakers so looked down upon by the audiophile community and why do they get no respect? Sounds like a Rodney Dangerfield line. <laughs> I get no respect. Well, um, I think there is definitely a group in the audiophile community that gives a great deal of credence and respect to horn loudspeakers. When I first started out in high-end audio, the very first high-end pair of speakers I ever heard was a pair of Klipsch corner horns, and I was blown away, gobsmacked. I remember the track. It was Edgar Winter's Frankenstein, and I'd never heard anything that dynamic in my entire life. I didn't even know dynamics existed. I had a pretty good pair of speakers. They were, a play, they were called phased arrays. They were a bunch of six and a half inch mid-ranges and some tweeters, or uh, woofers, I'm sorry, six and a half inch woofers. They were pretty darn good. But when I heard those JBL corner horns with an audio research system driving them, and he put on that da 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 and the drums going, wow. I was in heaven. And that still sounds good though I haven't heard it for years. I mean, we have much better sound now. Over the years, there's been many variations of horns. Some deservedly got bad reputations. Why? Because they sounded like horns. And there's been tons of dynamic speakers that sounded like pure dog do. I mean, just like, whoa, you call that a speaker? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't want to, and I, look, I've been part of that. I've, I've, I've dissed horns because they have that coloration to them, but I have heard wonderful sounding horns. And some horns, people have made up for the, the colorations of the horn, and for me, they take a little getting used to because when I first walk into a horn system, it does not sound natural. My ears have to adjust. And I'm sure that's not true with every horn system, but most of the horn systems, avant-garde, uh, the ones that I'm kind of familiar with, Klipsch, they have a sound to them that I have to get used to and I have to adapt to in order to enjoy them. And I never found that that is a good sign, personally. When you walk into Music Room 3 and you hear music playing on a pair of Aspen FR30 loudspeakers or the FR20s, you don't have to adapt to anything. It just sounds like music. The speakers have disappeared, they're gone, and in its place, there's music. That's simple. When I walk into a room that's playing, if I'm at a show or someone's house, and they're playing horns, there is a sound to it. They don't immediately disappear, and I have to get used to it. Now, once I do, horns have a characteristic to them that is stunning, and that is their ability on transients and dynamics that is nothing short of stunning. A piano note hit with a good horn speaker, I don't think I've heard any other form of loudspeaker, including our own, that can mirror the dynamics of that piano hit. And for me, I, I just, I don't want to have to get used to a speaker, but it's awfully hard once you hear it to not marvel at the ability of that speaker to reproduce dynamics like nothing else in the world. So, best I got. Okay, thanks for the question. I'll talk to you later. Bye.